Hello all, my name's Joe, and what we're going to be looking at today is how to create a simple sliding door inside of Unreal Engine. If you find this helpful, please like, subscribe, and hit that bell for more videos, and don't forget to check out my website, 3dassetlibrary.com, for more uh, videos, Unreal, and Unity Engine assets. So what we're going to be creating is something similar to this. So when we move up to our door, it slides open, and then when we move, move off, it slides back down. Now, what we're going to do is we just get rid of that, and we're going to start with our... Um, what I've just got here is the default third person uh, project template, um, nothing special in here. So what we'll do is we'll go to our content, right click, blueprint class, BP, we'll name this BP underscore slide door, and we'll drag that to our scene. Open up the BP slide, um, then we're going to do just add component arrow. I use this as a point of reference so that I know when I'm looking in my scene what's a door, what's not a door, etc. Just now give that a size there. Um, you don't have to do this if you want, I'm just doing this um, because I, uh, that's what I like to do. So you can see here I've got a giant arrow in the scene now. Now what we need to do is we're just going to be using basic geometry here, just cubes. Um, obviously this exact same principle applies to if you've got you know hand handmade 3D models and things like that and um, that you've done yourself. So if you've got a door and a frame, excellent. I'm just doing this so that everyone can follow along. So we'll go to add component, cube, and we just this is going to be our frame. So what we'll do here is we'll just um, create our frame here. So we'll set that up, drag that up. I'm obviously making something very big here. I'm going to copy that. Um, no, we're not. We're going to copy that. What's he doing? All right, let's drag the cube onto the scene root. Now we're going to copy that. There we go. So now we've got that. Will our character fit through there? Um, then we're going to copy that. As I say, if you've got your um, own geometry, feel free to use that. It'll, it'll still work the same. Um, slide that up and then what we're going to do is just uh, add another cube and we're going to name this door and uh, drag that to the seam root and I'm just going to size this to be our little door here so there we go and then slide that up so there we go, we've got a very simple door here. Now just we just want to check that our player will be able to fit through that. Yes, he will. So now what we need to do is we need to obviously make this door. I'm going to make this door slide up and then slide back down like we did. So what we'll do is we'll add a component and type in collision. So this is going to be, you'll see a little box is brought up. So this is essentially what's going to be happen when the player hits this box, it's going to trigger something. So we need to set that up. So set that to say uh, about 300 wide. Um, say 300 length, yeah that'll do, and say uh, 100 high, we put the height a bit higher, um, you could just obviously leave it low but what happens is, is if the player jumps into it sometimes you might get errors so this assures that if the player jumps into it it's still going to trigger this door. So now what we do is we go to our, uh, I'll just make sure these are all, are all under the, uh, the scene route. Yeah, so we'll click on our box and you'll scroll down over the right here and you'll see these um, events here. We want the begin overlap and the end overlap. So what we'll do is we'll just start with the begin overlap. So what this means is this is when we click that, that's going to take us to here. So this means that anything that overlaps with this trigger something. So then we'll drag the door in and we will go uh, get location, get relative location, click on the yellow pin here split the struct then we'll drag off the door again and we'll go set location set relative location then we'll plug the pin uh, the overlap into the set relevant location on the new location we will right click split struct then what we want to do is we want to plug the x and the y in and leave this blank so what we'll do is we'll set this save to 400 so what this is doing is basically saying that we want the location um, to be stay the same except the only thing that's affected is the up and down so in theory when we hit play we should get a very abrupt animation so you can see there the door opens it doesn't close though so what we'll do is then we will go click on our box scroll down and we'll go end overlap so this is what happens with when the character walks out of the box um, close so we will click on our set relative location and copy and paste that and we'll plug that in We'll plug the door in the target, we'll plug the X in the X and the Y in the Y and say set that I reckon about 150 and then we want to test that so 
So there's something happened there that it didn't like. What's that? So you can see here that when I hit play, I've got this error popping up and it's saying basically an influent loops detected. What this is, I believe, is that our box collision is intersecting with the floor here so that it's looking at it and instantly trying to close it because something's intersecting with the box. So if we just shift this box up, in theory, you can see now it's not intersecting with the box here in the main viewport. When we highlight over that, the door will go up. When we move off of it, the door closes. Now what we want to do is make that smoother because obviously at the moment it's very up, down, that's it. So we'll drag off the uh, uh, first uh, overlap, the begin overlap, sorry, and type in timeline, and we're going to name this up. Now, as you can see here, this is uh, plugged in there. So we'll double click on the timeline, click on the F for float, name this, uh, say, up again, and then we'll set the time to two. Um, so this is the how long is the animation. You can dictate your speed here and things like that. So then help press shift click, shift click. So then we want to set the initial uh, position when it's closed. So we'll set the time to zero and we want the value to be 150. Um, obviously you can play about with these depending on your door. And then the end one, we want that to be two, which is corresponds with the length here. And we're going to name that 400. Now, if you press this, these two arrows here, you'll see here that this fits the timeline. Uh, into our view. So we'll compile that, go back to our uh, event graph, plug up into this new location and we'll just double check that. And you can see here now it's sliding up. So now what we need to do is just repeat the, rep the same process but in reverse for the end overlap. So drag off of the end overlap, type in timeline, down, uh, oh, we want to plug play always play from starting on both because it could be this halfway left up when the player gets off but we always want it to start fresh so then double click on down again click on the F type in down it can be whatever you want it to be the speed type click shift click shift click we want the time to be zero but the value to be 400 because we're going in reverse this time to close and we want the time to be two and end on 150 and again use those to see what where we are yep yeah and just press compile, go back to our event graph, plug that in the Z location, and if we've done it right, we should have, um, I'm sure what happened now, our door working correctly. So, it slides up, and it slides down. So this can be applied to anything, you could just, if you wanted to make the slide left or right, it's just changing the, the axis, um, I believe would be the uh, the red one we're seeing here, which is the X, and um, you could do this exact same principle to a, a, a bog standard. So you know the doors that rotate on hinges. You just got to make sure that when you bring your geometry in from an external program, that the the uh, pivot point on your grid is set to the edge of the door, not the center of the door, because the whole the whole door will rotate rather than just the corner. Um, so hopefully you found this helpful. I'll be doing more little tutorials like this of how to create simple things. Um, so please do like and subscribe um, if you found this helpful. And cheers.